So there's no there's no bit of God, there's no bit of God that is less in Christ mm-hmm. because he's the Son. Mm-hmm. And that is the case that verse one uh, chapter one verse one makes. In the beginning was the word. The one we are talking about here, Logos. And the word was with God. That is the Father. Verse 1 to 18 is called the prologue. It's, it's more like, hang on to your seats, guys. Hang on to your seats, guys. Let me just, let me just give you uh, a glimpse of what you're about to get yourself into. And I love the way John never, um, I won't say waste time, but he never hesitates. Because the moment he establishes distinctly who Jesus is and where he comes from, because that is what the other, uh, the other Gospels state. They give the genealogy, where did he come from? And that is why the Bible is so beautiful. It's just so complimentary. Mm-hmm. If you want to know his divinity outside of Mary, then just go to John. If you want to know his biology, mm-hmm. in fact, it starts from Adam. <laughs> mm-hmm. Which is a very interesting thing because that means it's giving you a historically proven account. Mm-hmm. In other words, if you're interested enough to start to trace it, mm-hmm. you can actually trace it back. Mm-hmm. Who wants to spend time to look at the genealogies? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like most of us at Tukifika Gapot na Skipigi. And the Lord God said, Let my people go. And these are the house of Jacob. <laughs> Read it. Read it. You will understand context of who was who. And who came where and who did what? Mm-hmm. Because again, all these things was written for the sake of Christ. In fact, you can tell that God allowing the you know the children of Israel to document their genealogy was for the sake of Christ. Mm-hmm. So that when Jesus shows up, mm-hmm. he can make his case for himself. Because the documents <laughs> that God made Israel write. If you read the genealogy, dude, mm-hmm. this guy comes from a lineage of a king, mm-hmm. David. That should scare you. If the Pharisees spend a little bit of time digging into his genealogy like detectives, like Batman, mm-hmm. he says, I want to know about the history of this joker. Mm-hmm. And that is why, you know, uh, you know <laughs> yeah, I want to know the history of this joker because they thought Jesus was a joker. If Batman spent a little bit of time digging the, the history of, of the joker, maybe you'll understand. In fact, there's a part in the movie where Nani says, um, um, What's the name? Alfred or who? Alfred t- t- tells him there are some people mm-hmm. who just who are not here for the money. Mm-hmm. They just want to see the world burn. Mm-hmm. In other words, if you dig into their psychology, mm-hmm. into their into their origin, mm-hmm. you'll understand them better and you'll know how to fight them. Mm-hmm. Now, if the Pharisees, mm-hmm. God forbid, <laughs> they dig a little bit deeper mm-hmm. into who Christ really was, mm-hmm. like the Bible said, if they knew they will not have crucified the king of glory. Mm-hmm. If they spend a little bit of time digging into who this person really was and his claims and not getting offended all of a sudden by his claims, mm-hmm. then they will not have crucified the king of glory. Mm-hmm. That is like a disclaimer like, oh my goodness, I wish mm-hmm. you guys knew this. All of you will have bowed down. All of you will have been flat. Mm-hmm. Like Jesus says, when they come to, to, to arrest him, you relax. If I was to talk to my father right now, mm-hmm. he wouldn't hesitate to give me, you know, an army of angels here to rescue me because mm-hmm. they know where I come from. Mm-hmm. So, that is the point where John starts. He's telling you what this, is, this man is coming from. Mm-hmm. He was with God. In other words, there's that fellowship and that unity. Mm-hmm. He was with him. There's that fellowship and unity that the Godhead share. In his nature, is God. That's the Bible says that the fullness of Godhead dwelt in him bodily. In other words, there's nothing that is the nature of God that is not in Christ. Even when he came right here, he did not leave a 
piece of his godliness <laughs> in heaven and then came here that would make him less god now that would make a, a case for the uh, for the Jehovah's witness mm-hmm. if he left any bit of him being god and even if in fact even if he did that if he left his god is a bit of we may say godliness if he left because i don't have another word to use if he left any piece of his godliness he won't be worthy to die for us because he will cease to be god there's no quarter of a god and that's why we have a case we have a, an issue with the with the, with the Jehovah's witness because he says he is a god what does that mean it 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 does not it does not make sense theologically everything crumbles the moment you say Jesus is a god what does that mean explain that to me in a what is the word explain that to me in essence when you say he's a god in essence what does that mean what does he consist of 20% god we have his image so there's there's that part of you know god that is in us is that what is in christ so all of us are are like christ what 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 is the what is the a god bit that makes jesus a god you get it and so and that is the reason why all these other religions attack the deity of christ number one, you can't narrow him down to a god because even you yourself you can't explain that jehovah's witness can't explain what they mean by a god <laughs> they've never explained it to me so there's no there's no bit of god there's no bit of god that is less in christ because he's the son and that is the case that verse 1 uh, chapter 1 verse 1 makes in the beginning was the word and the harmony of the of the gospels is that it gives you all this evidence for people this guy was alive he existed a time in history and there's evidence even outside of the bible even though the bible is evidence enough because the bible is also a historical book it's not just a religious text it's a, it's also a historical book vitu kuna vitu zenye zime you know gunduliwa back in history because of the bible so it's, it's it's not just you don't just put it away because it's you know it's a, it's like the christian creed you know if they knew they will not have crucified the king of glory if they knew all these things then all the atheists will just bow down but their minds have been darkened by their by their lustful desires and the prince of this world has yes has darkened their eyes has put a veil in their eyes so that thing they don't see you know verse 2 says the same was in the beginning with god is repeating you see the word that was out there he was in the beginning with god in that way he existed before the beginning in the beginning when the beginning started when the, when the beginning started when there was the beginning he was there so he's outside of time he's uncreated and you only know that one person is uncreated yes that is god himself so he's making a case for the identity of christ now the son of god part you see the uh, the statement that we started with that you may know that jesus is the christ he's not yet started making the case for the christ that is the whole part of the book now especially starting from and there was a man said from there come here john does not does not hesitate to just get into the cracks of of his apologetic thesis <laughs> if i can call it that he, for of his paper he's like he's like writing a paper he's like dude you know hold my coat let me show you how this is done you know so that you might believe that jesus is the christ hold that thought the christ but hold the thought yeah. The son of God let's start there. Because the Christ comes after we know who he really is. In other words, God becomes the Christ. The story of God becoming the Christ. Before the beginning he was Christ. He was not just the son of God, he was Christ. That plan was hatched way back, way back. That is when he starts this, he starts up with the identity because to him all these two things are go hand in hand and that's why when he closing he's putting them hand in hand that you may know that is the christ the son of god so to says the same was in the beginning with god all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made look at it from this perspective the father commissions 
the building. He said, now we are going to build a cathedral. <laughs> going to build a cathedral. <laughs> in fact, in fact, to make it even more interesting, let's look at the prophetic the prophetic connotations of that mm-hmm. of what i'm about to tell you and then you you can you can wrestle with me if that is correct mm-hmm. because i can be wrong mm-hmm. david is the one who wants to build the temple mm-hmm. but guess who builds the temple the son mm-hmm. he's the one who commissions the temple mm-hmm. he says i desire this i want us to build he provides all the raw materials <laughs> But it is the son that builds. Mm-hmm. The father commissions. But it is through the son mm-hmm. that the world was made. Mm-hmm. Everything was made. But guess what? There's no distinct there's no distinct glory that goes to one person or to the other because the son, the father and the holy spirit in nature mm-hmm. is God. But just like he says distinctly here, mm-hmm. the word, there was God, and the same was with God. The same was God. So, he's also saying, these three, and the three I'm talking about here, we see in Genesis 1. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, that's why I'm not leaving the Holy Spirit out from John chapter 1, mm-hmm. because the same, same, the same, same scenario happening here is the same, same scenario happening in Genesis 1. And so he says, uh, and John 1.1 1, 1 is more like just a few seconds before Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. Because in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Mm-hmm. So when that beginning started like this, mm-hmm. Jesus was before that. Mm-hmm. And he's the one we, he's, he's describing here. So the Father commissions, the Son brings fruition. Because through him all things were made. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. All things were made by him. All the atoms, all every every single thing, every single thing, all the planets, all the galaxies, all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In other words, anything that was made. So if Jesus was made, then he made himself. Jehovah's Witness, are you in the house? He says, all things were made by him and without him was not anything, anything made, anything made that was made. So if Jesus was made, like the Jehovah's Witness claim, that he was created first and then through him everything was created, then he created himself. Because they all say that all things were made by him. All things. So the, the scripture they're taking this from does not exist. It's in their mind. Yes. They, are, they, have to, they have to come up with a scripture somewhere that says that Jesus was created. And that is why they say he's Archangel Michael. Which again just confuses me because angels were made after that. Yes. Yeah. Because the Bible says that they celebrated when they saw you know, creation happening. The Bible says that the angels rejoiced. Yes, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I'm listening in. Uh, trying to listen more than to listen more and let's speak less. Yes. But uh, can't help it here. You're talking about <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, on the issue of uh, on the issue of equating Jesus Christ with an angel. Yes. That there are certain logics that fail. Yes. Uh, in that model, mm. it's important to look at them from scripture. Yes. Like when you say that you model, well, the one way to, to smash that model yes. is, for example, in the case where Daniel prays, mm-hmm. remember? Yes. And he, the angel has to come down mm-hmm. to help him because the prince of Persia is, is resisting mm. the response to that prayer yes. through an angel. And this angel is being resisted. Mm-hmm. So Michael comes in yes. to... To help out, mm. you follow what I'm saying. So yeah. if Jesus is Michael, uh, 
you know, what's Michael doing me there? You follow what I'm saying? Because it's in him, all things hold together. Uh-huh. So Jesus is Michael, while he's fighting the Prince of Persia, shouldn't the earth be losing balance and stuff? You know I mean? <laughs> yeah, something to look into. Yeah. But angels can only be in one place. They can't be at two places. At a, yeah, at the time, yeah. No matter how powerful they are. So there are certain things to look at specifically. Yeah. Uh, that angels cannot be in two places. Yes. And if that, is, if that is Jesus, then, you know, The world should have ended. Yeah, the world has not that approach. Amen. Yeah, that's the point of figure. Yes. <laughs> that's true. In him, if in him all things consist, then even Michael himself consists in him. And that is why you can't give glory to angels. Mm-hmm. You know, because then who is going to... In in fact, in fact, the the angels themselves can't even hold it. Mm-hmm. They can't hold the glory of God. Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah they can't do it. And that is what this dude tried to do in the beginning when he was um uh when he when he wanted the glory that was of God. Mm-hmm. You know, he thought it was in fact, in fact the you know the biblical refutation of what Satan tried to do is in the book of Philippians when 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 you know when when the Bible says that he, Jesus himself did not consider equality with God something to be grabbed. You know, the devil thought it was something to be grabbed. Mm-hmm. Definitely, he thought it is. You know, Nikito ameji ameji care. So if I sneak, of course, it does not make sense. If I say if I sneak at night and, and grab the glory of God, <laughs> then I can be God. But you get the point. It is not something you can sneak sneak up on God and uh, oops, and God is like you know surprise. 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 <laughs> <laughs> What happened? You know, it does not make sense. It it does not make sense. So. And that is the reason why Jesus was lifted above all things. Mm-hmm. In the book of John, chapter 17, as we'll see, as we, as we continue, say that that glory that I had with you before the beginning, restore that and even more. Mm-hmm. And all things were made or put under him. His name was lifted to be above all other names. Mm-hmm. That at the name of Jesus, every every knee will bow. Every knee will bow. Of things in heaven and on earth. Because again, he did not consider that equality with God something to be grabbed, but he humbled himself. Like like we were talking before we started the uh, um, uh, the Bible study, we were saying that the way up is down. According to God, God's logic is the way up is down. In fact, for, for Jesus to be glorified to that level, he came from his glorious abode down here, humbled himself. He humbled himself even less than the apostles, even less than his disciples, that he washed their feet. That was the work of a servant, the lowest of servants. They will wash their master's feet, their master's feet. And that is why uh, Peter is like, I, I can't allow you to do that. He says, I, I can't allow you to do that because you're putting yourself lower, even lower than us. You know? So the way the way to be lifted up before God is not to do mighty exploits. <laughs> you know, it's not to evangelize to 3000 people. It has nothing to do with your apparent time in ministry. You know, I've worked with God for 30 years so he's going to uplift me. Nope. Nope. The way that God uplifts is through humility. Kwenda chini. And that is what we were talking about earlier on. We talked about fasting and, and you know humbling yourself before God because He resists the proud, but He gives grace to the humble. Yes, yes. The case we are being given here is a very interesting one because if He's the Almighty God who was with Him before the beginning and created all things mm-hmm. and has equality with God, mm-hmm. then when we start reading, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. And this man came as a witness. When he started reading from that point going f- down, then we, then all of a sudden, Jesus shows up on earth uh, by the Jordan. Okay, this picture does not make sense now. If you're really, really genuine, if you're a human being that has logic and is genuine, this pic- there's something wrong with this picture. This is not the way it's supposed to go. If God, who created all things, has his glory set apart, coming down on earth. There's something wrong with this picture. That is what the Muslims claim. 
there's no way God can come lower himself to human beings. It's just not possible. Mm-hmm. Jesus was not God. He was a prophet. Because if you reduce him to a prophet, then at least you can justify him being around. Mm-hmm. And that is the hard truth. That human beings are too proud. Mm-hmm. Human beings are too proud. Too proud to allow themselves to believe that God can humble them even lower than them. We are too proud. And that is why for you to come to God, you must believe that He is. Mm-hmm. Not that's just because, you know, but He, he is, He exists, means He's the way He is, His, his essence. Mm-hmm. You must believe, number one, that the way He is, that, that's the way He is. He exists. Mm-hmm. In a state of humility, in a state of wrath, in a state of providence, mm-hmm. in a state of judgment, in a state of love, you must believe those who come to him, to Christ, those who come to salvation, must believe. Must. It's not should or might, or maybe if they feel like they sh- <laughs> must believe that he is in his full essence. And so we are not presenting a half gospel, a feel good gospel. Because you want those who come to him to believe that. That's why there's a big fall away in the church. Because people have not read the book of John chapter 1 verse 1. The way it was intended that you may know that he is Christ. The son of the living God. That he is. He exists. That is his nature. That is him. And so when you come to Christ and you start understanding his full essence and his full nature. It humbles you to the point where you can't, you can't, you can't allow pride even to come up. Because if the God, the Creator of all things, who was with God, the full, um, um, the fullness of the Godhead, dwelt in Him bodily, dwelt in Him bodily, as He was walking on this earth, dwelt in Him bodily. He was not less godly. He was not less go- He did not have less godliness. He was not Thor. Like, he, he, he was demoted. <laughs> no. No, no. Yes. He left his glory. He left his glory. But God, the Godhead dwelt in him bodily. And that is why he was able to be approved by the Father to die for our sins. The other day I put a, a post on my status and he said that as simple as this, by the way, and you tell me if there's any problem with this, by the way, I'll tell you what problem they had. I said, Jesus was punished for our sins. Just that. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you know the reason why that person came to my inbox? Mm-hmm. I'll tell you why. The word punished. <laughs> he said, how can you say that? Mm-hmm. How can you say that God punished Jesus? That does not make sense. God did not punish Jesus. Where did you come up with that? And he said, Isaiah chapter 53. And say them, uh, you can read that and then you can tell me what, what you just read. I was like, the problem is, you can't believe that whatever happened to Jesus was punishment for our sins. Mm-hmm. He says, you know, he died because he loved us. Mm-hmm. You know, he died because... Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jesus died because he loved us. It was not punishment. It had nothing to do with punishment. Mm-hmm. Which is a very twisted way to look at salvation. If it is not punishment, then what is it? It's love. Because again, we think love is all there is, you know, in God. Love. It's just love. <laughs> Yesterday you were watching something and uh, this uh, progressive uh, 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 Christians were saying, you know, there's no, you know, there's no hell. Hell is just a, a metaphor. And hell and the wrath of God is a metaphor of swimming against the love of God. Doesn't that make you feel good? Doesn't that make you feel accomplished? (laughs) And encouraged, uplifted. That wrath and hell is just, they're just metaphors for flowing against. These are Christians, by the way. Progressive Christians. Progressive Christians. Progressive. There's nothing progressive, by the way, in Christianity. 
it is the way it was and it will remain to be those who come to god must believe that he is that he exists and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him not that those who seek him not just people who look for him diligently seek him because we want to make god to be santa claus you know he just punishes you a little bit by not giving you some gift when you're bad and then you know if you say i'm sorry then next time he can come with a ps no nope nope that's not my god that is an idol it does not exist yes. it just exists as a fragment of imagination mm-hmm. and guess what you'll find him in hell yes <laughs> people don't want to hear that but that's the truth mm-hmm. the truth will set you free mm-hmm. when you tell people that god is holy and the reason why he came to die was not just because he loved you mm-hmm. but because he's a holy god and he cannot let sin get unpunished and that is why he came and died so his love and his wrath and his justice go hand in hand you can't separate them you can't say that god loved me so he died nothing else nothing more it's just my love it's just his love he saw something precious in me nope the bible says that there's nothing good in a man there's nothing all of us don't seek after god all of us have gone astray there's none that seeketh god no not one the human heart is wicked and evil nothing nothing good in you desperately wicked in other words there's nothing you can do to redeem yourself nothing so god looked at that and was like hmm, i just love them too much nope nope it has nothing to do with you nothing nothing to do with you because so when you start there and then now you explain that but guess what he still loved you and because he can't accept you the way you are that sin he just does not rub it off and says you know what we can forget this because it's just there has to be justice for every sin and because there's nobody else who can pay it for you he comes and pays it himself now that is a full gospel now when somebody comes to Christ like that then they can remain in Christ you know why because they know outside of him there's no other salvation but if you just come and tell me god loves me then it feels like god is lying on you god just god can't live without you so please give him a chance try jesus try just try jesus please just just try him yeah. jesus is not your servant man he's a king and brother he's not coming in a manger he's coming as a king of kings the king of kings and the lord of lords mm-hmm. riding in a white horse with the heavenly hosts mm-hmm. that was about that asking you to try him <laughs> try him try do do don't even try him by the way the boss said that don't 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 tell the lord your god <laughs> don't, don't, don't try jesus <laughs> Like run to him run at his feet run at his feet bow down cry weep ask for mercy that is what isaiah you know mm-hmm. said when i saw the lord seated on his throne mm-hmm. i am undone what i am undone mean who 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 i am undone yes john also when he's describing Christ the essence of Christ in the book of revelation when jesus appears mm-hmm. john is like now it's as an evil it's as an evil when he saw his majesty mm-hmm. there's no somebody who's begging you to try him <laughs> and to the church of ephesus right mm-hmm. and to the church of the chaira right mm-hmm. i prove this and this and this but mm-hmm. if you don't change i'm coming mm-hmm. to remove you. there's no somebody who's bembelezar in the church He's not. He's not but then he's writing to the church. He's writing to the New Testament churches. Mm-hmm. Because at that point Kamil Kilkwa Nakuru there's only one church. Mm-hmm. So he's saying to the church in Nakuru, right? I know that you guys despise the wickedness of that woman Jezebel. But I have this against you. When I read those nini, I just realized by then all those churches there was all those fault. What makes you think in your 21st centuryness with all the potentials for sin you stand approved before god holy perfect every single day na sisi tunaenda binguni na tuna dhambi hatuna dhambi ah tumetakaswa hakuna hakuna kitu nimeficha mahali mimi niko mbele yako hakuna niko tu na ushuhuda sina dhambi niko tu na ushuhuda but god but the bible says that unaambia mungu afanye x-ray Yeah? When he got Daudi, was it? <laughs> Paul says 
that guys examine yourself if you've been the f- examine go humbly before god that is a heart of pride that says that mimi i have no sin in fact the boss said that he who says he has no sin has you know he makes god to be a liar the process of sanctification by the power of the holy spirit in our lives as a regenerated human beings is so that he can make us to be more like christ zile vitu ndogo ndogo zenye tunafikiriaga azimuudhi you know those are the things that he points i don't like the way you talk to to, to ladies I know you're born again spirit filled you preach the word but when it comes to ladies I don't like the way you talk to them you talk to them in a degrading way mm-hmm. like they're not important mm-hmm. So you tell me to unaona eh binguni eh eh usitaingia lakini kuna reward utapata You will be chao to mungu atasema simama ah naona umeingia ni poa inasaidia sana ina poa inasaidia but have this against you <laughs> and because of that mm-hmm. this reward you won't get <laughs> yes. So the work of the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. is just like in creation all of them were there together. Yes. Even in our salvation mm-hmm. which is more like that by the way. Mm-hmm. It's more like Genesis. Mm-hmm. All of them are there. The Father commissioned. That's what Jesus says, I have come to do the will of my Father. Mm-hmm. So the will of the Father was salvation of human beings. The son came and executed. And the Holy Spirit is now here to seal and to present us now as a bride. That is the work of the Holy Spirit, the sanctification of the son. That's why he says, Usiuthi Rom takatifu, the one that you are sealed for the day of redemption. Is the one that packages and puts around the stamp. Is the one that sanctifies and presents us before the Father. That's what Jesus said. I have to go so that he may, he may be sent. In fact, it is good for you that I go. Because ile kazi yake ah kazi safi. Ah, safi? Ah yeah 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 yeah. Ile kazi ule anakuja kufanya hapa. Mshukuru Mungu niende. In fact, muombe niende. Muombe niende. Ah, ile kazi ule ah yeah. Ah, usitoke Jerusalem. Namba ah yeah yeah yeah. Mkae hapo. Ile kazi ule anakuja kufanya ni safi. And so, when you start looking at John chapter 1 in the book of John from that perspective that J- John because of the way he walked with Christ he's making a case for the identity of Christ and by default he's making a case for us to be strong in our faith because of whom we have believed in you don't make you are not confident in your faith because you've been born again but of who whom have you been born again of who has made you to his church when we start when we start looking at the word of god from that perspective that the holy spirit through the whole through, through the holy spirit who is helping john write this scripture because all scripture is given by you know, inspiration of the word of, of, of god uh, when you start looking at it from that perspective then you get to understand much more deeper than anybody else reading the word of god out there the philosophers the atheists and all those kind of things it means a lot to us it's the meat it's the food when you start reading it it gives you assurance of your faith of your salvation you know you know what for whom i have believed in i have blessed assurance not because of the faith it's it's not the faith that makes you you know confident is the is whom you've put your faith on Because atheists have put their faith on who? On atheism, on Darwin. Mm-hmm. Scientists Hawkins. have put their faith in on Hawkins and all these other guys. Mm-hmm. You know, they they shower themselves under the umbrella. Mm-hmm. But for us, blessed assurance because of whom we have believed. And so let's finish this prologue. For in him was life, and the life was the light of men. This is not just another life, man. This is not life boy. <laughs> it gives life to boys but it gives life to boys and those boys become men but it's not life boy. And the life was the light of men. The life of Christ is the light of men. The life of Christ is the light of men. That is why he says that these guys, you see these guys that are, you know, the 12 the, the the 12 disciples, the fishers of men. These guys 
they will do much more greater than me myself have done because the life that was in Christ that life was the light to this man now they started walking like they were not in darkness even though they were thrown in prison because it's like it doesn't make sense why would you be thrown in prison and keep on preaching to the people out there it doesn't make sense it just you are you're walking contrary to the way things look because everybody else is in darkness and they're walking very very you know uh, careful eh what you know when 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 shika shika mokuta because they're in darkness yes but when christ comes his life the life that he lives the life of holiness that there was no guile that was found in his mouth ai <laughs> that life is your light Night vision my friend. Unatembea tu. Wasema unashangaa kwa watu unasikia watu wananguka nguka huko hivyo unatembea tu. Okay, say hey, wasema 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 una drop tu. You know they're like where is that coming from? You know. <laughs> But that life of Christ is the light of all men. And now those who are in darkness have seen a great light. Those who are in darkness have seen a great light. The light of Christ the light of Christ mm-hmm. and that light shines in darkness mm-hmm. and darkness has no idea what is going on <laughs> no comprende uh, uh, you can't see me man no comprende you can't comprehend it they just can't comprehend it this this life of Christ the perfect life that he lived is that which is accounted unto us by the way mm-hmm. it's not just his holiness that was in heaven mm-hmm. but the one that he walked here on earth that is what is accounted on our behalf because we are human beings and we walk on earth not in heaven mm-hmm. not in heaven the devil was in heaven the devil was in heaven he saw the holiness and the beauty of god he didn't walk in it guess what he lost it for us god came and walked on that holiness here if you accept it we get in that's what the, the devil can get back cuz he was living in the glory of god the holiness of god that was on his account by the way so even the holiness of the angels is not the holiness of the angels is not on their own account it's on the account of god god's glory that is why the bible says that to the angels who left their estate mm-hmm. the holiness of god was accounted on them also mm-hmm. so when they left that estate mm-hmm. they can be redeemed that's what the bible also says for those who have tasted the glory of god and fallen away would have been better if they did not because there's no other there's there's no other sacrifice for them there is no other sacrifice for them and that helps us also to understand the structure of of the kingdom of god how god views all these things you leave your state there is no other thing i can do for you you leave the holiness of god there's no other thing so the holiness that is accounted on our behalf is the life of christ that life is light unto us that we don't walk in darkness so when we stand in darkness we say lord i stand here on the life of christ my holiness is not my own it's not because i did not lie or because i did not lust or because i did not fornicate that makes me holy but it is the life that christ lived that is my light that is my light how he says in him was life and the life was the light of men and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not so the darkness of this world cannot comprehend the things of god that is why in the book of first corinthians paul says that um to the jews who looked for a sign they did not get they missed christ because they looked for a sign and to the greeks This gospel is foolishness unto them because they look for the wisdom of this world. And so in the midst of darkness, darkness has not comprehended it. So Paul is kind of like breaking this darkness down for us. For the Jews required a sign, for the Greeks required wis- wisdom. And because they look for this wisdom in the wrong place, they look for the wisdom of this world in Christ, they didn't find it because Christ came in humility. That light that he lived was a mystery to them. 
is a mystery is a mystery to 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 the darkness of this world the darkness of the wisdom of this world that we're talking about earlier that you just want to amass knowledge and wisdom that darkness does not comprehend the humility of the light of putting yourself last does not understand it and the Jews who look for signs they are looking for a, a messiah that will show up in a king's apparel a king's robe to them they did not comprehend it so that light shine in fact there was the shines in the in other words to us who have seen the light this is a great light the one to us you're like i wish you i wish you just saw but they can't they are blind i wish you just saw this christ is i just wish you saw the light because the light shines. the devil said that the light is not dim shines in darkness in the in other words in the midst of all the systems of the world that light shines in politics that light shines in education that light shines because the great counselor a mighty god to religion that light shines that's why many people are getting to christ in china because that light shines in that, that in that darkness but darkness has not comprehended it they trying to sniff it nero tried he failed if christianity survived nero mm-hmm. ah dude even peter didn't survive nero he was killed under nero by the way mm-hmm. yes apostle peter yes, he was a, he was he was, a, he was executed under nero but guess what christianity survived nero here we are they trying to sniff it out in china <laughs> people are getting converted every single day every single day the light shines in darkness mm-hmm. and the darkness comprehended it not And then he says and there was a man <laughs> Now let's start the story sent from God whose name was John not this John that has that is writing but John the Baptist now The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe He was not that light but was sent to bear witness of that light That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world He was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not is that a tragedy is that not a tragedy if that's not a tragedy i don't know what is can you imagine coming to your own and your own did not know Will you go home like this december holidays in the bank <laughs> can you imagine me showing up to my mama's house if my mom has no idea who just showed up it's like who are you Cuz mimi nimeingia nikaeka bag yangu kwa bedroom nikakaa chini maybe alikuwa ametoka nje kidogo naanza kupiga nduru when lynch kali maji kali maji the tragedy and then later on ana funguliwa macho that was just but they, that is what is going to happen to Israel and they will say that they will see him whom they pierced they will ask him where did you get these wounds from and this he says These are the ones that I got from the house of my friend. Ooh. Israel will weep and will mourn mm-hmm. that they crucified their Messiah. They crucified their Jesus. That will be a dark day, but again, a rejoicing day. Mm-hmm. Because they will be restored. And the light shone in darkness. And the light shone in darkness. Darkness could not comprehend. Could not comprehend it. Mm-hmm. That is a, a big tragedy that the true light, the true light. Mm-hmm. Not the superficial light. The pure the pure true light mm-hmm. which lighteth every man that cometh into the world <laughs> every man every man his light shineth through them he created all things remember mm-hmm. all the human beings he created them but again when they get here they forget him they, they don't know anything about him he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not he came unto his own and his own received him not of course he is talking about specifically the, the house of israel you know, that he came to his own and his own knew him not that's why jesus weeps for jerusalem when he's about to get there oh jerusalem if you knew the day of your visitation that's a tragedy that sometimes makes me cry i'm like lord you know how like people get born again later in life and they get to see the light of christ and they cry and they weep every single day they say how i how i wish i knew then he will have been light to me a lot of things singing here kwa 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 mtego zingine you know 
because the light shineth in darkness, in darkness comprehended not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. As many as received him, to them gave he power. So that power to become the sons of God is given. It's not from words. People think, if you, if you say the sinner's prayer, then you are Christian. It has nothing to do with saying the sinner's prayer. Okay, so so if being a Christian is reliant on you saying that the sinner's prayer, then what happens to people who cannot speak? Are they are they are they doomed? Are they damned? Like forever? Because there's a possibility. <laughs> no, no, I'm I'm asking you guys like this is rhetorical. <laughs> like I want to hear your response. What, what happens to them, Andy? What happens to people who cannot speak? Who cannot say the Lord's Prayer? <laughs> and interpret, interpret. Still, they can't speak. Oh, I'm going on their behalf. <laughs> That's a nice one. You guys are just impossible. You guys are just impossible. I can't believe you. I can't, I, I can't believe you say that. The people that cannot speak, they cannot utter confession. Because they always say that confession is made under faith. But they cannot utter it. <laughs> what happens to them? Again, he says, but as many as received. Mm-hmm. Received is not a work of the mouth. Yeah. It is a work of the heart. Receiving. Yes. That's why it says that receive with thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Thanksgiving in your heart. You don't just say, you can say thank you with, the, with, the, with your mouth, but you will not receive with thank you. Ata wimunye unajua habi, chijapoke. Asante. Lakini wimunye indani yaku unajua. So, it's not about uttering. Which again, dismantles a lot of our ideologies about Christianity. Mm-hmm. We think if we shout and pray mm-hmm. for two hours, then, to, you know, to rimashanda, up on the sas, utukufu buwana. Tumengia ku utukufu. Nope. Nope. The Bible says what? These people draw close to me with their mouths, but their hearts are very far from me. Back to our point about fasting earlier. Fasting is not the outward is not the outward fasting is not abstaining from food abstaining from food is a result of the fast the fast happens prior to the abstinence the fast happens in the heart that is the true fast that's what it says is this the fast that I've required from you is this the fast I've chosen that I've chosen mm-hmm. is this what I asked for mm-hmm. dude it's like you ask something from Jumia. JK does mo- mostly that. He, he orders something from Jumia. And then, why well, look at you like I would say something bad? No, I'm actually complimenting you. You buy something from Jumia, like I did sometime back. And I ordered this two pair of clo- uh, shoes, number 11. And, and then, <laughs> guess what? Moja likuja number 11. Like, but the other one, Ilikuwa mtoto. Like literally, ndogo hivi manze. Na imandikuwa number 11. Can you imagine these guys? Aki imandikuwa number... So I was like, the person who was packing this. Alipak moja number one na ingine number So as many as received him, the heart, the confession comes after the heart has believed. I didn't level pro light. You guys are just impossible. Because they're just impossible. And so, uh, as many as received him, to them gave him the power. So, they received him. He gave them the power to become the sons of God. And that is why you just can't wake up one day and because you've done something, you've lost your, your Christianity. It's just not possible. There's power. You don't lose power like that. It might be a gradual process. But just don't wake up one day because you did something or you got angry at somebody and shouted and now you've stopped being a Christian. Like the atheists say, Ona, 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 Meka Sirika, Unim Krisongani? And they taunt us like that. We don't cease to be the son just because you did something. It is an invested power. Unless the one was invested, it takes it away. You don't lose it. 
by your own works. Because guess what? You didn't get it by your own works. This, but then, let me be serious about this now. And this is something that imefunga a lot of us Christians. That we think, if you do something, we lose our Christianity. Or because you went and did a sin somewhere, you've lost your Christianity. Dude, God is not that gullible. God is not that weak. You didn't receive it because you stopped doing things. Why do you think you are going to, 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 to lose it? Because you've done something. It is power. Receive, for as many as received him, gave him power to become. So there's a process of becoming. But there's power that comes before. So the approval happens way before the process of, 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 of becoming sons in me. Like when you're born in a family, you are being taught to be a son. You become a son. But by default, the moment you're born like this, by default, you've been given the power to now become. In other words, you've been initiated now to be taught the ways of the family. So you're taught as a son in this house, we don't come in the house later than six. Now you are becoming a son. On Fridays and Saturdays, you go to your dad, he teaches you the craft of the family. That is now becoming and that is the work of the Holy Spirit. But you just don't wake up one day and you're like, let me feel down. Let, let me get born again. And you say the sinner's prayer. It's not, you didn't receive it by your works. You can't lose it by your works. You can't. Unless God himself removes that power to become, then your Christianity will be in vain. And that is what happens most of most of these churches, most of the youth is they think they are sons, they have not even been given the power to become. Because number one, the confession they made was from their mouth. And so they go to church every single Sunday, but they're not born again. Because again, being born again is not the prayer they made on last Sunday. It's the heart change, the regeneration that happens in the heart. It gives you new desires, new desires for his word, to get to, to want to, to do his will. All those things are the mark of being given the power now to become. And so after three months, they're falling away. And you're like, I, I, yes, I, I, was, I, I was a Christian, but then it just didn't work for me. The Bible says, those who fell away, they were not part of us at the first place. They were not. They thought they had the power to become. They did not have the power. Mm -hmm. They just made a confession. Mm -hmm. Because the confession that is made from a sincere heart, God is the one that bestows that power. Because again, God searches the heart of a man. He searches the reins. Inside, which were born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of the of man, but of God. So it is not your will to be born again. It is God. It is the will of God. It is not the will of man. It is not by blood. It is not on your own attempt to get born again. It is the work of God. It is. It has nothing to do with you. The only part you had to play was the sin that you committed, and the Word was made flesh. There we go. Now we're being introduced to him now on earth. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the whole only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and truth. Full of grace and truth. So this word that was there with the Father was made flesh. So he did not change his essence. See, the one he described before who was fully God with God, in fellowship, perfect fellowship with God, created everything, the same, same logos. He did not, he did not become less logos. The Bible said that, and the word was made flesh, made flesh. Sacrifices and offerings have you not desired, but a body have you prepared for me. The body was prepared for he to come. He was not stripped of his godliness <laughs> and then made to come, the flesh was just prepared for the Godhead to come. The glory is what he left. But him being God, the essence, because you, you, you can't... You, okay, how, how do you make yourself less human, for example? For example, if you are to get to a certain state, how do you make yourself less human? And they say, now, I've left, I've left my humanness. Now I'm less... You just can't do it. You just can't do it. It's not even in meditation. It's not, even, not even in meditation. <laughs> It, it does not. That's true. 
That's true. It's still H2O. Yeah. Yes. It's not less H2O for it to fit. Yeah. It may change form. Yeah. Yes. But it does not change essence. It does not change nature. Whether it's in a tank or a bottle or uh, or in a sewage <laughs> or in a manger <laughs> or on a cross dying <laughs> or whether he breathes out yeah. mm-hmm. it does not change essence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. And the word was made flesh. Very important. The word, the first one who you, Logos, was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. The glory of the of Logos and the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. So they beheld his glory. You see? At a certain point, they beheld his glory. You remember during the, uh, the uh, transfiguration when they saw his glory? Yes, yes. Yes. He was there. He was there. They beheld his glory. They saw him in his full essence now. Mm-hmm. Well, wait, what? Ah, to find you jambo. Peter, Peter, to find you jambo. Ah, me and Paul and Gekwa part on the on the on Paul was a tent maker. Ah, and if Rudy Vichini came and we shall find him on Boyake Pale, we shall find him on Boyake Pale. You know, they beheld, you know? they beheld his glory, and even if they didn't, even if you're not talking about that small instance of his glory, the works that he did testified of his glory. Amen. Amen. Because the blind saw, Amen. the deaf heard, Amen. the dead were raised to life. Amen. They beheld his glory, his glory as the only begotten of the Father. Amen. Full. The only. Nobody else. Are, are you called Willy? Are you called Willy? See my twins? Yeah, Jesus does not have a twin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Muslims tend to argue yeah. that uh, he cannot be the son of God because David claims that title. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. So this yes. is his answer. Exactly. In fact, he even says, just to refute that, he says, "But the Lord said to my Lord, mm-hmm. the one that was talking about the Lord uh, is saying that uh, David uh, sees himself as the, as the son of God, mm-hmm. and he describes himself. But say, the Lord said to my God, to, to, to my Lord, sit at my right hand mm-hmm. until, I until I make all your enemies your footstool.' John bear witness of him." And cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. And he that cometh after me is preferred before me. For he was before me. So, again, the reason why he's saying those words specifically, because John is making a point. That you might believe that is the Christ, Son of God. So, he's speaking the words of John to testify of the origin of Christ. Which is what he's trying to, the case is trying to make there. That he was before. And he precedes everything else that was created. And that is why he, he quotes the words of John. John bear witness of him and cry say, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me. For he was before me. He's not talking about age differences. He's talking about pre-existence. And his fullness have we all received. His fullness. Jesus did not give half or quarter. He didn't give, you know, a, sm- a small, a small, a small bit of God, you know, eti, you know, mungali to testisha. No, of His fullness, have we all received, in grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, He hath declared Him. So the law came by Moses so that grace can be shown and truth came by Jesus Christ. And so this, this is the prologue of John. And I'll close by saying the most important thing that maybe we should take from this study is that the case that is being presented here is of the identity of Christ. That identity cannot be explained without the mention of his pre-existence before all things. That is part of his identity. The Christ, the Messiah, 
has to be God himself. Not should be, not maybe can be. The law that was given by Moses requires the Messiah <laughs> to come as God himself. And that is why the Bible says, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Grace, unmerited favor, came by Jesus Christ. The law was loaded on us. In fact, Paul says the law was to be used as a schoolmaster to really show us who we are. And the law just makes us sinners by day because it tells us who we really are. Cannot make us perfect. That was its work, to show who we are and who God is. To show God is holy and we are sinners and we cannot attend to it. But grace came through Jesus Christ. And that's the grace that we preach, that all men should come and see. And so you can't preach grace without the law. It's just not possible. What are you presenting? Grace. On what? That you can't keep the law. Now we are talking. You know, flowing again is the love of God. <laughs> that is a heresy. The flowing again is the love of God. It wrath and hell is just flowing again. It's, the, the, it's metaphors for flowing again is the love of God. In the end they preach it with, you know, sweet, silent voices that are just creepy and devilish. But, grace, the law was given by Moses, but grace came through Jesus Christ. And so that is the case that the prologue of John makes here, which now we've gone through, and I believe that is the will of God for us to understand that. And we can't exhaust this. In fact, we've even rushed through it. If you've noticed, we just rushed through it so that we can get an understanding. And that is the reason why we're here on earth, is that we'll never get bored. Because every single time we open the word, there's always be something for us. And it's not a new revelation. The same, same one, just in a different light. <laughs> because again, the light shineth in darkness. It will keep on shining. It will keep on shining. Keep on shining. Keep on shining. And that is our life. That light is our life. So, I'd want to stop there unless there's any question or any addition or any interjection. Kama kuna mali ulisikia nilienda vibaya. Tafadhali, present the case. And uh, so that we can build each other's iron, sharpeneth iron, one man sharpeneth the countenance of another. Okay. Now, it, it's just a thought here, and I thought, let me throw it in. All right. <clears throat> and it is this, that uh, one of the reasons, we, we are, you know, the world today, the modern day world is not uh, subordinate to Christ, is yes. because we believe that we can save ourselves, yes. humanism. Mm -hmm. And that's the prevalent concept today. And the reason is because we've made technology. Yes. yes. And so technology is fighting theology. Mm -hmm. So what's happening is, and simply, technology is simply, is nothing more than the modification yes. of the environment to serve human ends. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this modification can be a process or an activity that simply extends or enhances human function. For yes. example, a telescope, for example, extends our vis visual perception. Yes. yes. Right? Yes. yes. A tractor, on the other hand, extends our physical ability. A computer extends our ability to calculate. But likewise, yes. Jesus, or the Word of God, yes. which you have so rightly said in John 1, yes. the Word of God extends our perception of God. Amen. And wow. therefore, the personification of the Word, which is Jesus, mm. Jesus becomes the... Jesus is simply the invisible uh, extension Mm. of the invisible God. Yes. You follow me? Yes. Jesus is the person in which we see mm -hmm. the manifest glory of God. Yes. It is impossible to know God yes. except through Jesus. Amen. So Jesus is the is sort of the monitor on which we see the interface and mm -hmm. understand God. Mm -hmm. So this is the reason we are further and further away from, from, from subordin being subordinate to God. The reason is simple. We are not we we think we are we are more superior because of uh, technology. Technology. Mm. So technology is replacing theology. Mm. Yeah, mm. that we are we are ourselves becoming gods, mm -hmm. which will be the greatest fallacy of man. Yes. But I believe there are those the remnants who will believe in him, mm. and uh, those who put their faith in him.
Amen. Uh, will become eternal. In fact, we are the ones who will become gods, if yes. you ask me. Yes. Because we will be, we'll live forever. Yes, yes. That's, that's true. So in a sense, mm-hmm. uh, we, we are the real gods. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like you said, the way up is down. Yes. So humility is what is needed here. Mm-hmm. To acknowledge the creator as who he is yes. and give him rightfully his place mm-hmm. in the creation. Amen. Yeah. I just wanted to drop that in. Yeah. Amen. Thank, thank you so, so much, Pops. So let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this uh, wonderful Bible study. Thank you, Lord, that as we dig deep into the scriptures, Lord, you will reveal yourself to us. Amen. Father, we thank you that the word of God is an extension that enhances our understanding of who you are yes. through your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, that Jesus is the word made manifest, who became flesh so that we can see him, touch him and feel him and understand him. Thank you, Father, for your word. I pray the word that we have received today will continue to nourish us spiritually for the glory and honor of your name. We thank you and we worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pops. So, see you tonight. Hallelujah. God bless you guys. Amen.